Joining me now from Huntsville, Alabama, conservative pollster and media consultant, Rick Shafton. Rick, before we drill down on, on Beto, I like to call him Francis, by the way, before we look at his numbers, you're doing a lot of polling now, and I would imagine you're just ramping up and getting ready to do a heck of a lot more. Right now, looking at some Democrat candidates, when we focus on the Democrat candidates, are you seeing any common denominators among them? Are you seeing any trends among the Democrat candidates for president who would like to challenge Donald Trump in 2020? It's all very early now, and a lot of it's name ID. That's why you're seeing Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders at the top of the Democratic Party list. I don't think either one of them are going to be the candidate. I think you're going to see some newer faces. We, we did some polling in Texas on uh, on the man I call Beta O'Rourke, uh, and uh, he, he's he was like a, a, a an image, and he came close to winning there, similarly to how Obama won the same type of there's and a lot of these Democratic guys they have it's it's personality but it's not issues they don't want to talk about issues right yeah I, I, I call it I call it Rick his campaign right now so far Beto's campaign uh, ambiguously bucolic and I think people are starting to catch on to that that he's very much like Barack Obama it was a kind of a, an empty slate and he just hoped that the American people painted in whatever uh, they wished for Barack Obama. And you polled Texas residents in particular regarding Beto, and, and you got some fascinating results. The first is the favorable versus unfavorable. His unfavorables are extremely high. Obviously, there's a lot of undecided in, in your polling, but the unfavorables of 44% seems to me rather high for a guy who tried to run for Senate just a few months ago. And it was close. I mean, it was a nasty race. But how he came out of that, but Ted Cruz, he has six more years in the Senate. O'Rourke's now running for president. And uh, what we found was that, first off, he was losing Texas. And, and our polling, we call people with cell phones. Six percent of our polls were done in Spanish. We really want to get, we call registered voters who voted in previous elections. We want to make sure that we have a, a very accurate read. We had Trump beating O'Rourke by 13 points. He had a 44 unfavorable. Now, remember, Donald Trump only won Texas by seven points over Hillary Clinton. So what we're seeing is that against this, the, the golden boy of the Democratic Party, he actually ran better. And when we asked people who disliked O'Rourke, the 44 percent, what didn't you like about him? We got kind of a pattern. They saw him as phony, inexperienced, left wing, pro-open borders. And then there were a lot of people who just said he's a rich kid who changed his name to sound Hispanic. <laughs> and uh, it was just bad all around. And the favorables, it was like, what you, he's young, he's dynamic, he's good looking, he, he has energy. He's, he's energetic, right? It's the same nonsense we heard about Obama. Right. Very, very and, vague as well. But he's got nice teeth. And then when you match got, him against the president of the United States, the numbers are interesting as well. They tell an interesting yeah. story. Uh, it's early, but uh, look at this. 52% to Trump, 39% O'Rourke. Uh, but his 39% is interesting, it jumps out at me because when we go back to the favorable rating of 28%, that's 11 points higher than his favorable rating. Yes, well, that's because you have a certain number of people there like, I have no opinion of them, or maybe they don't like, but I'm a Democrat, I always vote Democrat. I, I may not like, oh, let's say, I may not like Beto O'Rourke, but I don't like Trump more, so I'm gonna vote for O'Rourke. And similarly, there are people who, who are not favorable to Donald Trump, most particularly have a mixed opinion of him. They like some things about him, they don't like some things about him, but almost entirely voting for him. And uh, so the favorable, that's the hardcore. But then there's people who are, I'm a, I always vote all straight Republican, or I always vote straight Democrat. That's going to be included in that. And then people like, I may be an independent, but I don't like O'Rourke. So that will factor into it as well. And then there's just people who are genuinely undecided uh, going into this. But those people are not inclined to go more for the Democrat. Than, than Trump at this point. Obviously, Texas is a uh, red state. It, I, I would imagine overall is uh, very much approving of what the president of the United States, 45th president, uh, is doing. There's a yeah. lot of support for President Trump uh, in Texas. That said, we also know there's an effort underway, and it's real, uh, by the Democrat Party and its operatives to try and turn Texas purple into blue. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering if it, you're polling uh, if you're maybe read between the lines or maybe it's staring you right in the face, are you seeing any kind of reflection of this effort of what the Democrat Party is trying to do, and that is tex turn Texas red to blue? Well, 
Well, they had some success in the suburbs this year. Uh, and in the polling we've done since uh, since January, since Nancy Pelosi's taken over, it seems like the suburban edge they've had is kind of falling apart a little bit, that they don't have that same momentum. I think it's because people in the suburbs, that, there's a lot of swing. In, in 2016, Trump, especially in the higher income suburbs, did not run as well as Romney. And that's where the Democrats made a lot of gains in 18. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.